So a bit of a last minute one for me and a different one, normally fixing the Subaru. Um, but today, fixing the wife's Mini. Uh, it's a really good car, but aircon doesn't work. There's a big leak in the condenser. So in this video, I'm gonna get rid of that bumper, show you how to set the bumper off, the grill, and then to show you how to get the condenser out. And it is a fight, it is a big pain. But we'll do it. So the first job's easiest, and that is, no, I want that one. One, two, three, four screws tuck out of that grill, and then pry it from each end, and it'll just pop. There you go, that's it. Once they're out, pop that both sides, give it a straight pull, that whole grill will come off. So first job, we're taking the bumper off. You've got to take out the lights. You've got one fix in there, one fix in there, one fix in there, and then a little head of one just here. To kind of clear it from the bottom before you pull it out. Let's disconnect this this plug. So you should be able to just push them in. Oh dear. There we go. Once that's undone, you just go get this washer jet. See on the back of that. And you're supposed to pull it and then just gently turn it. Pop off. If you're unlucky enough to have this spin and the nut spin behind, you can't get at it. So I ended up drilling mine off. And then when you drill it off, you find you can't quite slide it out here because it still goes through. So I've just quick, quickly nibbled out that hole. It's not great, but that allows you to slide this out. And then you can repair that later or buy a new one of these. Anyway, with them out of the way, onto the bumper. So we've got one there. One there, they're the next two we're going to take out. Okay, so the next fixing is a bit of a hidden one. It's in here. You can see it comes, comes through there. But to get at that, you've got to take these off. And to take these off, you need to do these clips. And I've got this one out. So they look like that in the car. They don't look like you can do anything with them, but you just put like a two mil Allen key on there, push that through and it pops the pin out. And then you can pull them straight off with a trim removal tool. They're quite simple. Okay, so four of them little clips and you've got to give that a right good pull these. Just be careful, you this top one's dead tight. There's this T20 to undo. Last one's inside the wheel arch. You've got this one down here. It should. Quite that easy. Yes. Look on the right tools. And this, which is a 8mm. Also easy. Lovely. Okay, so that's the top bit of the bumper loose. Now we're going to just drop down and go underneath, and you've got just a load more tabs to pull off. Ideally, you did get yourself a trim removal tool. I'm just going to go along in between the two layers. Come on. Quite hard one, did Pop them out like that. You've got a fair few to do, though. Once you've got those out and tabs, you've also got these quite large screws. These are a T25. And one of them snaps straight away on me, so hopefully this one comes out. But yeah, them. When it comes to doing these clips on this front flap, this like wind deflector, you only have to do the two towards the wheel, not the front two. That's an off now to loosen that whole bottom half of the bumper. And then, a bit of advice here, always plan your route where you're going to put the bumper. I've took loads of bumpers off, and I'm going, right, I'm going to put this down and I'll scratch it. So get your area. Also, as you start to pull it forwards, just look down there, that's some horrible cobwebs, and unplug your fog light, otherwise you'll end up pulling them cables off. Now well, that's off, you can see your uh, condenser that we're changing, and these have got a really strange like shroud here. They're just clipped in, just kind of put your finger on that button there. You can move that out of the way. But, Somehow I'll go get down there. Removing them covers has uncovered another T25. So these are their little caps. You'll be able to lift this up then. 
So fix and remove, all you do is wiggle this up and come on, off. There we go, both sides, loose now. Once you've got that released, what you're looking for is that coupler down there. And the coupler has three screws, or two of them hold the coupler together, and one of them holds the coupler to the car. So you need to go down underneath, back up that way, and look again. Luckily, I mean, you've got these aircon pipes here, it's so quite obvious, but if I poke the phone up there, you can see the three. That one at the top now, that holds it to the car. I recommend leaving them in. And then these two, side by side, these rusty ones, I think are 225s. Let me see if I can get an extension in on there. Nightmare. So here's my advice when doing this. You've got this like, little bulkhead thing here. These are so easy to get at, as opposed to those up there. I'm sure you're trying to get at. Now I got one, the other one stripped straight away. It's really annoying, they were T30. But because of that, I can't get at it. I don't want to try drilling it because it's been torn it's really close and the other aircon pipe. So I'm just going to split it here instead and then pull it up through. Now that bolt's out behind. Well, this is loose down here. But, typical mini, I can't get at it. So, what I'm going to do is look through this gap, pull that out of the way, and I'm going to cut those two pipes, but make sure you cut them on the condenser side. So, oh. there, and the one above it. Chop them too. Oh, finally. Lift this sucker out now. Yep, cut them two pipes. Loads easier. That's dark around there, look. So I'm guessing I've got a leak there somewhere. And there's the piece that's causing me trouble. Obviously, they're only uh, O-rings, they are. And then I'm hoping, so are they in there. Need to drill that out. Ideally, don't damage them, but if you want to order them anyway, then you don't even have to bother with this bit. There's your part number. Okay, so this is the interface that goes into the new condenser. What I've got is a, a blunt hook. And all I do is unhook them, pop them off, and put new ones on. These look in really good condition, but I mean, you can get a set like this for about 20 quid off eBay. So I recommend that, and then just put new seals on. And also, I put a bit of, uh, a bit of cement on there as well, but a tiny, tiny amount designed for this. So I've just lent the new one up there. I'll take the bungs out. Now, this one got supplied pre-pressurized so I know it didn't have any leaks which is really nice so when I took the bungs out all the air rushed out which is great you got to try and do is just gently there we go pull that in line because remember that should be about level there and that that obviously just wants to come around just pulling left a little bit we'll get that alignment sorted and then back under the car to put the other end of that pipe in up there now that's back in place but just because I split that joint is that hose and then this hose as well to go back on now I'm going to replace those o-rings as well again just because I split it this one's not seated very well and um, I caught the uh, o-ring when I put it in so I'll change that one out again Should never push these in with the um, with the bolt. Should be able to slot it right the way up by hand, and then just run the bolt in just to hold it. Should not be compressed, as it not be pushed in, not be seated by tightening the screw up. It's not the right way of doing it. What it means is that you could have trapped the O-ring, and then you won't know. That's it. Let's put the bumper back on. These clips first, 
got a little square plate. Obviously you can see how that sits over that. And that sits in there. Push that up to there. And to put these back. That is to locate. We've got a little tab around the back there. Little tab's gotta go low and you can clip that in. On. Looking good. So I just saw a bit struggling a bit with that side piece it's because these the heads obviously come off and I pop the side off. I'd always recommend buying just one of these generic trim panel kits off eBay because they don't like their work. Lovely. Just make sure that's tucked back behind there. You've got your, your bolt hole for your eight headed screw and you've got these to push in. So, take the center out, put them back in, one handed, and get your little core, put your core in. I'm gonna tap it in. Don't worry too much at that point about getting them fog parts put back in because there is at least one good thing on this Mini, and that is fog light access through the wheel arch. Brilliant. When putting the headlight in, simple enough, just remember to connect up that power cable and your uh, headlight washer, both around the back. Dead easy to put the washer back on. Just there, get it nice and lined up, don't force it on. And then the last little bit should click. Yep. And then power cable. I like that's one on one loom, one plug, that's great. And then using the markings that we put on before, we should be able to put this back in exactly the same place. So I was right, um, the Mini did find me. And um, it's done though, it's done. So we're going to get regassed. I'll show you that, I don't think. But um, hopefully that sorted it. Better off. Ah, it looks good again.